The Ghost Town of Edgar Lee Masters by Hector and Eduardo. Edgar Lee Masters was born in Garnet, Kansas on August 23, 1868. After Masters was born, his family decided to move to Lewistown, Illinois. His childhood was scarred by his father's financial struggles with a faltering law practice and reluctance to support his son's literary interest. Masters attended Knox College for a year but was then forced by the family's finances to withdraw and continue his studies privately. In 1891, he was admitted to the bar and had moved to Chicago in 1892, where he found a job collecting bills for the Edison Company. He built a successful law practice and for eight years, he was the partner of Clarence Darrow. In 1898, he published his first collection called A Book of Verses and also married Helen Jenkins around that time. Masters considered writing a novel about the relationships of people in a small Illinois town. Masters had been submitting poems to Marilyn Reedy, the editor of Reedy's Mirror in St. Louis. Reedy didn't publish these poems, but he kept up the correspondence and gave Masters a copy of J.W. McHale's selected epigrams from the Greek anthology. After reading the selected epigrams from the Greek anthology, Masters felt the challenge to adopt the idea for his novel into this form, combining free verse, realism, and cynicism to write Spoon River Anthology. The Spoon River Anthology is a collection of monologues from the dead in an Illinois graveyard. The Spoon River of the title is the name of an actual river in Illinois, but the town combines Lewistown, where Masters grew up, and Petersburg, where his grandparents lived. Spoon River Anthology was wildly successful, going through several editions rapidly and becoming one of the most popular books of poetry in the history of American literature. His success and friendship with Monroe also brought him into the Chicago group and contact with such poets as Carl Sandburg and Michelle Lindsay. In 1917, Masters left his family and later divorced his wife in 1923. In 1920, Masters gave up his law firm and moved from Chicago to New York City, where he retired to the Chelsea Hotel to write. In his later years, Masters received several awards based on his earlier success, such as the Poetry Society of America Award. He, however, died on March 5, 1950, in a convalescent home in Philadelphia and was buried in Petersburg, Illinois. The Hell by Edgar Lee Masters Where are Elma, Herman, Bert, Tom and Charlie, the weak of will, the strong of arm, the clown, the boozer, the fighter, all, all are sleeping on the hill. One passed in a fever, one was burned in a mine, one was killed in a brawl, one died in a jail. One fell from a bridge toiling for children and wife. All, all are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on the hill. Where are Ella, Kate, Mag, Lizzie and Edith, the tender heart, the simple soul, the loud, the proud, the happy one? All, all are sleeping on the hill. One died in a shameful childbirth. One of a thwarted love, one at the hands of a brute in a brothel. One of a broken pride in search for heart's desire. One after life in faraway London and Paris was brought to her little space by Ella, Kate and Mag. All, all are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on the hill. Where are Uncle Isaac and Aunt Emily and old townie King Cade and Savine Houghton and Major Walker who talked with venerable men of the revolution? All... All are sleeping on the hill. They brought them dead sons from the war, and daughters whom life had crushed, and their children fatherless, crying, all, all are sleeping, sleeping, sleeping on the hill. Where is old Fiddler Jones, who played with life all his ninety years, 
braving the sleet with bared breast, drinking, rioting, thinking neither of wife nor kin, nor gold, nor love, nor heaven. Lo, he babbles of fish fries of long ago, of the horse races long ago at Clary's Grove, and what Abe Lincoln said one time at Springfield. The first poem in the Spoon River Anthology is The Hill. The theme of this poem is death because it focuses on how people die and how they live. Silence is another poem from Edgar Lee Masters. It is about our natural inability to express ourselves to others and to ourselves. Masters touches upon the underlying fears, questions, and mysteries of life that are all around each of us. He lists the great wonders of nature, the tragedy of sickness, death, and the unfaceable recalled horror of war. In this poem, he also states that we are the animal. He almost paints marriage and parenthood as a tragedy, a bridge never quite crossed, which to those who have lived in it, there is an underlying truth to that. He begins to talk about Joan of Arc being burned at the stake. He tells us that these epic experiences render us speechless. Despite everything he has talked about, he states that it is okay if we don't understand everything. Another famous poem by Edgar Lee Masters is George Gray. This poem is about a dead man who is thinking about the ironic design of his gravestone. The marble sailboat seems a most benefiting symbol for his life, a tool of potential motion and adventure encased in stone. George Gray lived in a small life of safety and comfort. In avoiding risk and pain and adventure, he also missed out on all the things that make life sweet and give it meaning. He whispers to us to not make the same mistake, to live forever to its very fullest so that at its end you may have no regrets as to the things you wish you had done and the man you wish you had become. Hud Putt is the second poem in the Spoon River Anthology. It talks about the voice of a man tried and hanged for murder. Hud Putt tells the reader that he lies close to the grave of old Bill Pearson, who grew rich trading with the Indians. As Pearson grows rich through manipulation of the law, Hud Putt becomes angrier and angrier, finally resorting to armed robbery, killing his victim. There is a note of ironic triumph in this poem. However, for Hud Putt concludes, now we who took the bankrupt law in our respective ways sleep peacefully side by side. <laughs>